give to worship God this morning. Hallelujah, we give to worship God this morning. Oh, gracious Father. 
Father. We come to you right now, Father God, seeking your mercy and your grace, Father. We just ask whatever it is that they're going through, Father God, you know the need. Father, we ask that you touch their hearts right now, Father. We ask that you mend the broken hearts, Father. We ask that you lift up those spirits that are down right now, God. We ask that you encourage them, Father God, and you touch them like never before, Father. That you teach them and you lead them and guide them in the right direction, Father. And whatever it is, Father God, we ask that you show them, Father. Give them clear vision right now, God. We just thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Father God. But we ask that you just touch those that are on their way, Father God. We ask that you give them travel and mercy, Father God. And we ask that you be with them, Father God. Those that are watching, Father God. We ask that you just bless them, Father. Whatever that need is, we ask that you fix it, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. We ask that you lift them up, Father God. That you encourage them, Father God. Whatever it is, Father God, let them know that you hear it, Father God. You see it, Father God. And you know all, Father God, and it is done right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Father God. And we continue to give you all the glory and the honor, Father God. We thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus. We say it is done, Father God. Father God, it's right that you are on your back. We are healed, Father God, by the, the, the covering of your blood, Father God. We are strengthened, Father God. We are lifted up, Father God, and we magnify your name right now, God. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you and I praise you, Father God, for a blessed weekend, Father God, that you have gotten us through, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for another day. And we give you all the glory and all the praise right now. And all these things we ask right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God. Amen.
That's a challenge. Not necessarily to be more vocal, but definitely be more responsive. Dear God, we thank you. I know some of you seasoned saints, every once in a while, have to be reminded just because it's bad, it doesn't qualify us to make a laundry list to God that he's still worthy of admiration. And so I'm just wondering where you are this morning, that in spite of it all, that you can still tell God we thank you, my brother, with me. Come on, I'm not oblivious. I am acutely aware of the hardships, and you are going through stuff. Lest God reveal it, I won't know about it. But what is not up for discussion is that he's still worthy to be praised. And for some of you, that is the conduit, that is the vessel for which God is not going to get you out, but get you through. Can I get about four people to this a get me through praise? I'm not clapping because it's finished. I'm not clapping because it's done. I'm not praising because it's paid. But I'm worshiping him that I got to get through it. I got to keep waking up in the morning. I got to keep dressing these kids. I got to keep feeding this house. Come on, somebody. I know it looks like I'm not looking for you to qualify me, but are you on the same street that I'm on? Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Come on, come on, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. You that at home, there's some folks in the building that just need a moment. And they don't even hear a preacher open up a text. They just need a moment with their God. Do you mind? For those that you cannot see with lifted hands and rendering the fruit of their lips unto a God that is worthy to be praised. Brother Kevin, I know it's so easy to ask him, Lord, I need. But the only reason I can ask you is because I trust you. And so, Lord, I want to show you thank you this morning. I want to tell you about my bills, but thank you this morning. I want to tell you about people that are sick in my family, but thank you this morning. I want to inform you about the pain of last night, but thank you this morning. You're the only one that understands but I want to thank you this morning. You're the only true forgiving person in my life. But I want to thank you this morning. It is hard not to ask you because you are so good. It's hard not to ask you because people have let me down. It's hard not to ask you because people have stolen from me. But I got to say thank you this morning. Thank you. It's so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. To only take your presence and ask you for a few things. Mars is just easy. It's just easy. Murphy is just easy. God show up. And Pastor, there go my list. Lord, I need, I need, I need. And it's not that in the absence of me understanding my responsibility to God. But God's presence just automatically provokes an understanding of the communicable attributes of God that I just know who He is. And it's just so easy to start asking Him for stuff. Because I know that he will be accountable for his character. But where is our responsibility this morning? Just to tell God, thank you. If you run the risk of giving God blessings this morning, you're actually telling God that I know you're aware of that which I need. So since I trust you, I won't talk to you like you don't know my brother's sick. 
I want to talk to you like you don't know that there's a need in the house. What I want to do is just tell you thank you. Knowing that you will address everything in due time. Even if this is that appointed time. I'm not in a hurry to prove I can preach because I can't. But what I will is just give you a few moments to suck with God. And then when it's time for me to do my little part, that is what they call the foolishness of the gospel. I will do my best to encourage you with the word of God. Come on, right where you are. Just tell them thank you. For some, some of you for your saints. Come on, put your neighbor on notice, whether that's at home, whether that's you typing in some sort of statement, whether that's you in the building. Will you just put a few people on notice? I'm not crazy. This is not an ignorant worship. Christians are not fools. We just have a relationship with a God that sometimes that I have to engage him in the absence of my troubles to let him know that I trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Bible says in 2 Chronicles the Bible says in 2 Chronicles the Bible says in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, just the idea that your hands are free and they're not still lifted if you're at home and you've already started with your notes. Thank God for you. One more again. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. I'm going to read a few scriptures. Why not? We're in church. And clearly, I should not preach my opinion. But let me stand behind and on the word of God. Uh, for some of us, our time and tenure in, in, in the gospel has, uh, and this is not a blanket tip indictment, but just allow me to have this premise and then I'll get on with my moment. We've been sitting on the premises longer than we've been standing on the promises. Um, and while not cause, not ask, not saying that God has caused the moment in times that we're in, but he definitely will get the glory out of that. Amen. I pray that you just have a moment with me today that we're just going to stand on the promises of God. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, and the 13th verse begins, and all, somebody say all. Oh. Oh, that matters, that matters. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord, that's capital S, depicting a noun, which is a person, place, or thing. And he, the Spirit of the Lord, not the Spirit of Christ, that's very significant, the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hurricane, all ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. That's so familiar it's in, in, in certain atmospheres, just, the, just stating such words can provoke almost an empty phrase because we just want the battle to not be ours, and we definitely want the battle to be over. Um, but the battle is not yours, it's God's. In the beginning of Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, um, y'all just got to excuse me, I'm even going to have to preach with a joy I don't possess, which means that it's going to be in the absence of my reality. My happiness Amen. is not based on my happenings. Is that all right? Amen. So don't, 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 don't get to get nosy and wonder what's going on in his life. I got trouble too. I'm just determined to trust God. And if I'm going to trust him, not only will it come out of my mouth, it's going to show on my face. Y'all think I'm trying to be cute. Just every once in a while, y'all, I don't know, your generation taught us to fake it till you make it. Well, I'm making it right now, and I'm smiling like everything is already all right. Uh, I, I thought y'all went to that church that I went to where the most folk would say stuff, don't wait till the battle is over. 
Y'all ain't go to that church that would just mean your country folk would just say things that you know intellectual people don't like to grasp, but but they would put something in our place is a thing of hope. And every once in a while, you gotta trust God when you cannot see it. And so this message is as if everything is done. This message is as if God is who He say He is. And Jehoshaphat um, is dealing with something that happened in chapter 19 around verse 2. And around verse 2, if you back pedal and read it for yourself, there is a seer, there is a prophetic uh, utterance that comes, and he speaks to Jehoshaphat about his dealings with um, uh, nations that do not love, that hate God, particularly the words they, they hate God. And so in his relationships with these heathen nations, now we fast forward to chapter 20, I won't give you the whole background, but you can go read it, but that's the chest. It's solely the relationship of the king that now encompasses uh, what's going on in chapter 20 that affects everybody in his leadership. And in verse 20 it says, and it came to pass after this, that's the this, after this, in chapter 19, that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and, uh, and them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Somebody say battle. Battle. We got to slap hands. We're going to execute spiritual social distancing, but you can open up your mouth. One more again. Say battle. battle. And so now there's a battle that is coming. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. And behold, they be in Hezazon Tamar, which is in Engedi. I'm trying to break some of that down to give you the gist of what has happened and what is going on. And when he hears about them coming against him, Jehoshaphat feared. Now here's my problem. Uh, in chapter 19, when he's being admonished about his relationships, he don't have any fear. But the same people that he's comfortable with, now they're coming against him. Are you with me? Some of us, the reason why it's hard for us to tell our testimonies, and at least this is my, where I might not get too many amens, a lot of things that we fear, we were once in relationship with. I take a oath as amen. And yeah, you see, when it gets real deep, we don't say amen, we not spiritually. I need you to tell them yourself. There's a lot of things that we're dealing with right now that we are in fear of, and some of us, because we don't know your background, we come to lift you. We come to tell you the devil is busy. We come to talk about trouble don't last always. But what you leave out of the testimony is, but just the other day, I was in an entanglement with it. I was dealing with it. I was loving what I was doing. I see they must all be at home. Even these four people that's in here gonna be honest, that there's some things in your life that you have dealt with or dealing with, but just the other chapter of your life you are comfortable with. The same people that are coming, if you solely read chapter 20, you will feel sorry for the people of God because something will be expounded in this that's going to blow your mind. But chapter 19 lets you know that as a leader, he is responsible. He feared. Set himself to seek the Lord. Before you uh, become tunnel vision and your amen is collected when we start talking about redemption, but your scowl and your brow gets to be bent when it's talked about leadership. Uh, before you throw them under the table, which is what we're apt to do in today's society, before we talk bad about the leader, we all fall short of the glory of God. Okay, one more again. Now I should have to hustle this one. We all fall short of the glory of God. However, when we all fall short, we don't always rush to a place of consolation and redemption. Let me tell you what I appreciate about this king, that when he feared, he did not seek anything other than God. Okay. I, I needed that moment to, to really completely reveal uh, the state of where I am today. That, that was just what I needed. When we fear, thank you, Holy Spirit, if we're not careful, by and large, my Christian experience has been that, that when we fear particularly things that we have been in a relationship with, not just people, but things, a relationship with negativity, a relationship with depression, or because those are spirits, y'all, a relationship with the wrong person, a relationship with disobedience, a relationship, thank you, y'all, y'all response, let me know I need to be. And so when that comes about, 
guilt often over, overtakes us. And it's hard to engage refuge in God because it's hard to run to somebody that you offended. Unless you're completely arrogant, void of any Christianity, walk in complete wickedness. wickedness. I'm not talking to anybody. You can be disobedient, but when it really the rubber meets the road and you recognize you can go no further than you are in your condition, it's kind of hard to go to God because I love him. And I realize in my failure or in my heart, I just ain't comfortable asking him for help because it's my fault. Am I talking to anybody? Okay, y'all not feeling that. Any of y'all parents or children, it's kind of hard to go to mama when she's about to realize that you got to tell her not only what's wrong, but you have to tell her that you did something that caused it to be wrong. Talk to me, y'all. I can get through this, y'all. We can go. And so that's why it's hard to run to God. I'm impressed with this king that he absolutely understands that it's his fault because of his engagement with the wrong people, but he had enough sense to know that God would look beyond his foolishness and receive him because he wasn't running to God to save him. He was running to the Lord. That's why I see you can't clap because it's hard to go to God when you're wrong because you know he ain't going to always get you out. He's going to teach a lesson. He's going to show you the way. He's going to tell you that trouble don't last always. That's why we go to other stuff, other people, other ideas, other attitudes. But am I talking to anybody that you just got to be honest with your failure sometimes and go, I got to go see my daddy. He's going to give me a lecture. I might lose some stuff. I might fall short. But as long as I'm that he is in control, I don't care if I lose my job. As long as he is in control, I don't care if I lose my friends. As long as he is in control, I don't care if I lose my house. I'm not going to push some of y'all because it's going to take a real believer. But am I talking to anybody in the house that you have been in a place where you have failed God and you have to lose some stuff so it could be a part of the lesson of your disobedience? Give me about five people that can shake up the rest of the people in the building that you can always go to God and say, I messed up, but I want to keep my car. I messed up, but I want to keep my house. Sometimes you got to go to God and say, Lord, help me. And if I lose the job, if I lose the friends, if I lose the ministry, if I lose my new car, let's be the God that is in control. I see y'all the attitude put me in the right direction. I ain't looking for five no more. Tell me I only need three. Can I get three for real folk in here to say sometimes I just got to go to God and deal with the repercussions. And knowing that even when he say no, it comes with grace. Because his grace is sufficient. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what's going on in today's society of believers. And so the Bible says, let me give you the text. The Bible says that I'm impressed with Jehoshaphat. That he's a leader. And he exposes himself to God. And he proclaims something. He proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And the Bible says, and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Oh. Oh. And not only did he go to all of Judah, but even out to all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. I want to do this unpacking of the word Judah because we can unpack the word and not have it in the confinement of the text and, and take the actual application of what that word, not just the tribe, not just the particular nation, but their praise is under attack. And the praise is under attack and the king says, the response to that is sometimes you got to sacrifice. The reason why this, this might not be impactful if you don't not just study this dispensation, which is a period of time, but you have to understand the culture. The king messed up. But the response of accountability is for everybody. That's cool. Come on. You also have to understand that when it's unpacked in the text, when he stood in the congregation in verse 5 in, 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 in Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord in the new court, which speaks maybe even of a renovation of the time of, 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 
of uh, Solomon's. Um, uh, it, it could be the, the outer courts. But there's something that needs to be had. The king messed up. But in order to respond justly to what's coming, everybody needs to sacrifice. Let me, let me do better. Let me do better. When the devil come, <clears throat> he's not going to swing through the door and tell you, excuse me. You, 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 you haven't lived long enough to understand? I, 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 I know that I do very short of premises, but I got to do it this way. I'm even uncomfortable, but you have to deal with God. There's a thing called <clears throat> innocent bystanders. Wow, this is a lowly um, example, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't try to fluff it. It happens. They, they come to the neighborhood. They come to the community. They didn't intend to shoot her or him. They were after them and those, but they're innocent bystanders because you are in proximity of the intended target. Too many of us walk in the body of Christ and go, I ain't doing nothing. I'm better than, and at least I'm not doing. But when the enemy comes out of the body, <laughs> he's not going to walk by you and say, excuse me. You can be part of the innocent bystander. Because in the text, it's the king that's responsible for the relationship. But when the people decide to turn around and attack them, they're coming for everybody. The reason why the church, one of the reasons why the church is suffering is because when it's time for sacrifice, we always look at leadership should be solely the one. But in the text, during a time where women and children were not counted for, do you remember the time where Jesus fed 5,000 men plus women in? I'm doing something. Walk with me. He fed 5,000 men. He counted the men plus women and children. Because they were not accounted for it. Don't, don't take it as such a chauvinistic moment, but that's the time in which they live. But in this particular text, when the enemy was coming, the king said, oh, no, 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 no. He, it might be my fault, but y'all going to be innocent bystanders if you don't think you got to sacrifice too. The text now says that all of Judah began a fast and recognized that in a time of suffering, there's also a time of sacrifice. That might sound like an oxymoron, and it may look like I'm robbing you of your praise. I know I'm trying to help somebody in here because we have told God, you think that your suffering is your sacrifice. I, I know, thank you, I take that as an amen. Many of us think because I'm suffering under the hand of God in a place of obedience that that, call, that automatically equates to be my sacrifice. The suffering is based on the times for which you end. The sacrifice is based on the call from God. That's two different things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are suffering because of pandemic. You are suffering because of your economic structure and the restructuring. You are suffering because of how it is trickling down and affecting this and that. But that's suffering because of the times. That's not sacrifice. Because oftentimes, with suffering, it removes that which you shouldn't have had in the first time. Uh -oh. yes. Or you have falsely acquired. Am I talking to anybody that would be honest with your friend that in a time of suffering, I first start losing things that I should have never had? Right. Right. Yes. 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 I'm doing good. Oh the Bible says, now that they are before the Lord, they seek the Lord and not the Savior. They seek the Lord God of their fathers, and then they say, Art thou not God in heaven? There's an admonishment, there's a bit of an attitude, and then can I, can I help you with something, but, very, but, but stay spiritual in my application? The question is, Art thou not God in heaven? And then, sister, there's another question they ask. They ask, uh, and rule is not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen, and in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee. But I'm about to say something. When you talk to God, tell God the truth. Yes. Oh, Pastor Kenny, that's pretty easy. But then he would not have admonished us, particularly in the text on multiple times, um, that when we, when, when we worship him, that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Um, if you read one particular text, it's a lowercase t, not depicting a capital T, which means the Holy Spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. When he was talking to that woman at the well, she was lying. Because he asked her a question and she said, uh-uh, not me. 
So that lets me know that in our worship, we're not always honest. Read the text. She is standing before God himself, the manifestation in his son. She's in a moment of worship because she referenced the mountains. She, in her moment of worship, she can only trust Jacob's well. She's in front of a man that can provide water that she'll never have to draw from again. But in the middle of worship, in the presence of God, all she can trust is her own experiences. And her experiences led her to say that Jacob is a provider. That's a lie. And if we're not careful, we'll run reference to that which we're more comfortable with, which is why she pointed to the hills. Because during that time, the Jews had de 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 deemed them to be less of a nation of people when they had mixed marriage. That's why the disciples wanted to go around Samaritan and didn't want to go through her town. And Jesus pressed straight through. He didn't worry about the dangers. Am I with somebody? And so in her worship, she was exposed. In her worship, she dealt with her insecurities because she said, why are you a Jew talking to me? And so that's why we're in this particular text when they said these heathens. Sometimes you got to tell God exactly what it is. The Bible says that these heathens are there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Are not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave us into the seed of Abraham thy friend forever and they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary for thy name? Can I help you real quick? There are a few of you that need to hear this. One of the reasons it's overwhelming and Pastor Kenny is not that I don't receive but I'm having to deal with my humility because there's some people that are coming against me that I could have hurt them a long time ago and God told me to close my mouth. But all of a sudden, they done got a little something in their life and now they done made a complete U-turn and trying to badmouth me and I'm dealing with God. I should have let they have it when I had it. That ain't y'all. Let me tell you about the children of Israel. When they were inhabiting the land, these same people that are coming against them were passing by them. And the people of Israel could have utterly destroyed them. But God said, leave them alone. Have some humility. Because you got to be careful. The same people you pass up is the same people you pass on your way down. But some of us need to be honest with God and say, there are some people coming against me. And I know they ain't got, what the hell they look like talking bad about me. I'm the reason they was even able to pay their bills. I'm the reason they family even had a chance to be restored. I'm the one that had it back when everybody turned. I see y'all ain't feeling this. This is my testimony. And sometimes it's hard to go to God because all he's going to do is keep you in that place of humility when you're being attacked by people that you were obeying God in the first place. Yes. They're struggling that these heathen nations are coming against them and these are the same people that you told us let them alone. Yeah. And the Bible says, oh, I'm going to press through. The Bible says, and look how they reward us to come cast us. Whew, come cast us out of this is very significant. This is the right turn of my message, and I'm all downhill. Uh, Brother Nabo, they, they're struggling to understand that sometimes, God, I told you being humble don't work. I told you, God, you know, I'm up here fasting and praying and living a point of sacrifice, and, and look at them. I, and, and I wish some of you would be more, maybe transparent, maybe there's some inward honesty that you look at God sometimes and go, really, I got to take that from them. <laughs> Come on, Lord, let's talk in the office because they ain't no, they ain't no body. But what you do unto the least, you do unto me. But there is a revelation because they pray to God that they, the heathen nations, come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou, thou is an intimate word. This, this shifts from to be completely relational. That's why when you read in Psalm 23 that thou art with me, that there, there is a shepherding that happens in the 23rd Psalms. But then when the thou art with me in the time of peril, there becomes a connection with God. Am I making sense? Because you can follow somebody and not be close. But in this particular text, they acknowledge a shift when it comes to the enemy coming after things which God has given them. And the reminder is, it ain't mine. There are a lot 
lot of us in here that we're trying to protect some stuff during these times. In your spiritual haste, your sincere worship, your, your true prostate position, the tears in your eyes, the sleepless nights, the pain, the, the, the discouragement, the, the uncertainty of how two and two is no longer four is before God trying to keep your stuff. But I submit to you, go back, cry the same tears, have the same pain, lay prostrate in the same manner, deal with the same discouragement, walk in the same uncertainty, and this time, instead of telling God to protect your stuff, tell God that they're after his stuff that he's giving you. Y'all missed it. Right now, there is at least 15 of y'all that can protect some things in your life because you kept telling the enemy that it's yours and the devil ain't scared of you. But the moment you go back and say, I apologize for last night's rant, telling you to get out of my house, telling you to get out of my child, I renege and I want to start over. This is the Lord's house. This is the Lord's body. That's the car God gave me. And when the enemy understands rightful ownership, he understands the right insurance. You can't insure and have no assurance of what you have unless you can say it belongs to God. God, I'm going to preach a little too hard in here. I'm not talking to anybody that you didn't mean no harm, but you was protecting your car. You didn't mean no harm. This is my house. No, it ain't your house. Because if it had not been for God, you'd be on the streets. If it had not been for God, oh, you think because it's overtime and you got you a good job. You know how many people got good jobs and nowhere to go? Swing by Hurricane Lord. You know how many people got family and still ain't got no support? Can I get you to fix it real quick and fix up the mess of your week? And stop telling God to protect your stuff, but tell God I thank you for the car you loaned me. The child that I'm steward over. The money that belongs to you. Because that's why the devil keeps digging in your pocket. That's why the devil ain't afraid to keep knocking at your door. Because you think that's your door. That's God's house. That's God's body. The Bible, the Bible puts into an understanding that sometimes trouble will help you get the right acknowledgement of whose possession it's in. Clearly this is the king that has been given reign over the people but the sovereignty over thy possession, God, is yours. You gave it to us for an inheritance. Back up. That's why I don't got no attitude about getting over people trying to attack me when I gave them a pass. I said, y'all up. You thought I wanted us to be mad together. That's why I can forgive people because when you come from me, you remind me that I don't deserve it anyway. When you come from me, you remind me that it ain't mine in the first place. And I feel sorry for you putting your hands on my stuff because I'm insured not by God, but by God. Come from my car if you want to. God, trust me with that. Come from my finances if you want to. He's going to protect me because I'm a seed sower. I'm a tither and a first fruit giver. You don't think God ain't going to protect my little money when I know that it belongs to me? That's why I can say it in the form of a testimony and still have a smile about family stealing from me and qualifying it as something else using rhetoric in their mind and using people in their ears because, ooh, ooh, can I tell y'all, can I tell y'all something right now? Please, I just, please don't let this waste and fall down on fellow ground. Somebody recently took, took something from me and I said, God, what, what do I do? He said, they stole their seed. I, I said, say that again, God. He said, you were about to use that. He said, but because you're methodical, you know, rush. And so sometimes finances has to sit. You just because you got it, you can't use it. You got to have a plan. And I said, what's that again? He said, one, that ain't yours. He said, that was their seed. They stole their seed. They're going to spend it now. They're not going to sow it. He said, so don't worry about it. Keep it pushing. And I got Tony. God, that's all I needed. When I say I turned my frown upside down, and I went from being mad to being concerned, because what God was going to use to bless their life for the rest of their life has now been completely lost. Now let me take my life out of it. I need you to take, I need you to let it go right now. Some of you are at home, somebody took something from you, and they don't recognize that God gave that to you as an opportunity for you to be good ground. Can you clap your way out of your frustration? 
That's what I'm talking about. Can you celebrate your way out of your depression for about 30 seconds? They didn't steal from you. They stole, they see. And now God don't have nothing to reward you. I'm proud to keep from hurting. I'm proud to keep from retaliation. I'm not celebrating the flesh because a coward can fight. Don't, don't, don't think I'm trying to talk about I'm something to somebody. A coward can shoot with his eyes closed. You can swing with a nitty and hit something. But I cried because I wanted retribution in a manner that would have been reflective of the relationship. I'm not trying to kill anybody, but I'm going to let people know. And God said, leave it alone. They stole their seed. I'm trying to help you before I close. I, I, I don't parade Facebook and, and I hate to even have a comment about it because if you don't like it, don't be on it, which is, which is my, my motto. But, but, but I'm obligated very, 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 very sparingly to go on it to review things for our ministry. And I mean, if once a week. And I'm watching how you are listening to people preach the pain of their life, but not the lesson. The bitter person is always telling you about the man, the woman. This person is always telling you, but they don't tell their part. You have to be careful with soundbite sermons. I fear for y'all. I can say that in a degree of separation because I don't live on I fear for y'all to watch how you execute and excite yourselves. Or let, let me be a little hood. Gash yourself up behind sound by sermon that they only preach things that are not priority but are just personal. Yes, you can undergird them and say, well, that's what the power is. No, because everything you personally been through, you haven't learned. That's why you're still going through it. Miss me with that. I got, a, I, got, I got a response for that. That's not my sermon. And you have to be careful because we're teaching now with some people that have a personal responsibility and the king now understands that he does not hide behind title or position. He hides behind the humility and reminding God who he is. And in his humility, he's not afraid to engraft people into the place of sacrifice. And he lays prostrate. Let me hurry up, uh, uh, Pastor Tracy. And so the Bible says that now they, they're coming against us. This great company and can I tell you the smile on my face? And God, we don't know what to do. You know how many times y'all have formed the search committee if I came over here and told you, I don't know what to do, but let's raise all right. I give no money. Sometimes you need to celebrate that you have leadership that can tell you. This is beyond my Christian experience. I might not know what to do, but I know who to ask. Okay, hold on before you dismiss me as being unknowledgeable. When I don't know what to do, it elevates and magnifies your responsibility. Who I don't know is the real folk on say man. Because the Bible says, then. I did the etymology of the word then. I wish I had time to break it down. I'm not going to do it because it's going to take up too much time. All you that stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Go through the Bible and find when they're itemized like that, specifically in Old Testament time. The king has told God before a nation of people, I don't know what to do. And the people said, that's our man of God. Y'all, let's get together. I can see the king kind of putting a little spiritual elasticity in it. I can see the king seeing all the people getting together. Oh, my God, they're going to vote me out. They're going to go on Facebook and tear me down. Back my stuff. I can see him going. They're getting together. Ooh, and they didn't invite me. Read the text. <laughs> Honey, come on. They're they going to they keep their little check. They're going to they gonna wear it. And, and then he looks up. And somebody that knows how to stay before the Lord. Uh -huh. yes. This particular prophetic utterance comes from a man that's from the line of Asaph. That's why they give you his genealogy. If there's a song of Asaph, it's the 73rd song, which they're, they're a history of choristers. 
worship leaders. So in a time of trouble, some of the most trustworthy people are those that know how to maintain their worship. And it ain't always leadership. Because the king has told God, I don't know what to do. And the people say, let's get together. It ain't about his title, it's about our God. Yes. And when God spoke through the man, he said, Hearken, read, listen, ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, last and thou, King Jehoshaphat. I need to teach here, I ain't preaching, and I'm done. Thou is the intimate word. I don't, I don't have to do this. I promise you, God made me very strategic. That was the intimate word. We don't want you to feel like you're left out because you failed. Come on. We let you last, not because you're last, but because we want to let you know in a very intimate fashion that what God is about to say includes you personally. Come on. Because the child of the lineage of Asaph is about to speak a word and the king that is distraught needs us for restoration. Yes. Judah, all you have is Jerusalem, and thou, 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 thou. Intimately, thou, you come here, broken one. Yes. Can, can I talk to y'all real quick and I'm done? I'm speaking to thou today. Yes. For some of you have lost your worship. You ain't got the amen. I'm not looking for you to call. Some of you don't clap like you used to have zero favorites. You know, church is closed, yes, but you ain't lying. You ain't signed on in months. Come on. Some of you have lost your commitment to God financially. Yeah. You know the pandemic, <clears throat> you've been broke before. Come on. Come on. Stop it. And the responsibility to God is not based on circumstances, it's based on His Word. Yeah. Right. Your 10% might look different, but it's still 10. Yeah. It ain't 10 what you used to do, it's 10 of where you are. There's some, there's some broken people online. There's some broken people in the house. And I want to have a thou moment with you. That it looks like everyone else can respond to God when he speaks. It looks like there are a few people that you know that are sincere, that ain't faith, that their worship is for real. And it looks like you're left out. I want to have a thou moment with you. That what God is about to do, it includes you. Yeah. Even though you've been disobedient. Mm -hmm. The king in chapter 19 is proven to have been in relationship with people for which God had tried to give him a degree of separation. There's some of us, the reason why we're having so much trouble in our promised land moment is because we don't know how to break off wilderness relationships. I feel that's a good moment. People like Miss, Miss Denise and, and Judy, they would use shot moments like that. They, they just love relational talks with God. Uh, am I making any sense? Don't, don't bow your head. And if you do, I'm still speaking to you. There's some of us right now, we're having promised, long, promised land moments, but we've never broken off wilderness relationships, and they're coming for you. They're coming for you. But I'm going to speak to thou today. To let you know that the battle is not yours. For when the psalmist began to speak, he said, Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Can I give you something as I close? Ooh, I ran over. God is so good that he understands that you have a reason to be afraid. We got people so spiritual saying, you know, God is not giving us a spirit of fear. Yeah, the Bible says he didn't give it to us. We never talk about who did. Right, come on. Right. We all got a reason to be in this way. Things that are going on in society, you have a reason. But the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to thou today and saying, in spite of your reason, which I acknowledge, don't be afraid. Yeah. The battle is not yours. It's God's. Amen. I, I, I don't know if you caught that. As I, I don't know if you caught that. Very specifically, he itemizes 
person not the Savior for which there is something that they need to be redeemed from. They need to be saved from this perilous moment. They need to be saved. They are coming to utterly kill and destroy everybody. And in a time of complete destruction, the Spirit is offering the Lord's help, not a Savior. But when the Lord speaks, he could have spoken, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. The battle is not yours, it's God's. I hear God saying the many names of God. Amen. For some of you, you don't need Jehovah Child. Because you have not lost his provision during this time of suffering. Oh, I know I am. I'm, I'm attached to people that have not lost God's provision. Can I be fair? I'm attached to people that ain't seen nothing but increase. But they've lost God's peace. They ain't trying they, they sympathize with you with your pandemic. They sympathize with you. They don't even like to tell you that they got they kept their job. They don't even like to tell you that they got promotion. Because they want to sympathize with you. Yes, yeah, it's rough out here. How you doing, girl? I'm just making it. Knowing you're almost lying because God's been keeping you better than he's ever had. You park down the street because some of y'all got new cars. Who am I talking to somebody? I know people buying businesses. But the Lord's provision power is that he keep us because God is on his way. But your Jehovah Jireh is somebody's El Shalom. I don't need him as a provider. And, and don't, don't infer anything from that. That also means I just don't want nothing. But what I need is another attribute of God. Will you stand with me real quick? If you so desire, I need you to have a moment with me as we close. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Woo. Come on, take your time with us at home. 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 Woo. Take your time with us at home. Take your time with us at home. Take your time with us at home. Take your time with God. You better in the building. You've been trusting the Lord, and He is in control. And now you just don't know. For some of you, it's not provision. You need a God that's all powerful. I'm encouraging you. For some of you, it's not the power. I need a self existing God. For you, it's not that that you have the right crowd. You're not looking for abundance, you're thanking Him for sufficiency. Come on, I'm not asking you to look at me, I'm, I'm asking you to have a moment with God. For some of you, you know that you can't change it. And so you just want to celebrate that he's a sovereign God. For some of you, while the Lord is yet in control, God, I just need you to be merciful. Lord, while you are in control, God, I just need you to be faithful. Mercy, God. Lord, while you are in control, God in me through God. I need you to be never changing. Mama them say, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Whew. Dear God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. The battle is not yours, but God's. Yes, Lord. While you're getting control, leaving us and navigating as the chief a great shepherd that you are. 
It's those attributes of God that are yet keeping us when our soul yearns for salvation. While you might not save us situationally when we thank you for an eternal salvation, God, will you be our peace? Will you be our El Shaddai? Will you be our Elion? God, will you be that for which we call? Thank you, O oh God, to those that are listening, for those that will hear. Will you be the God who sees? That's El. Will you be the Almighty God? That's El Shaddai. Will you be the Lord that heals? That's Yahweh Lord. Will you be the Lord that will provide? Jehovah or Yahweh Yahweh. Will you be the Lord that is there? Yahweh, Shema. Am I, am I talking to somebody? He's in control. But God, this is what I need. I need you to be my friend. I need you to be the example of my victory and my strength. Yahweh, he Who am I talking to somebody? That's you, Jehovah, driver, girl. I'm Yahweh Nisi. I, I ain't tripping off my bills, but I just need God to be my banner. I just need him to be a shepherd. He's done so much for me that in these trying times that it just caused me to trust him or be my Yahweh Rod. And if you want to know the God that I need, while I'm following the Lord that I serve, I need him to be my peace, my shalom. And if you don't think you're qualified for this moment, the words of this song that will be whispered is for your victory. This is not a praise team song. This is a moment of, of inclusive and corporate worship. I see you yet standing. Speak to your spirit, but I speak to your body. Just, just the tail end of this song is where we just want to qualify this moment. Listen, don't you start having no emotional teeter and totter for the spirit of the Lord has set the utopia. But will you just hear these words, minister to these words to yourself. Lord, I trust you, but God hears where I need you. I've been. Come on, you qualified. I've been through too much. You are forfeited. Oh, right. You've been through too much. Like, you should be angry that the devil thinks that you attacking him, him attacking you, is going to cause you not to worship. Do you know I have grown to understand that the very fact that you're trying to prevail against me, I know I need to worship alone. Come on, you went home. Easy, easy song. I've been.
We say spiritual folk believe that God is everywhere. And that the traffic power of the Holy Spirit. You might not know your east and your west and your north and south, but just send your hand towards Lake Charles. Send your hand towards Houston. Send your hand towards the unseen and uncle that you cannot touch. We been. Come on now. You are spiritual beings. And you know God is our sugar And while I'm trusting the Lord, I need my omnipotent God that touches me here, to touch me there. Try the tearing eye of those that born the law from the Holland Spirit. Try the tearing eye of those that born the law of this black actor that makes us feel like we have lost the people of the black community. Try the hearing eye of those of us that are watching how we are being slain in the street and we want to get back, but it will only make it worse for our time. So we want to just trust God. Trust the hearing eye for the person that's watching the news with only those hope that a pandemic unemployment will continue because they don't have no job. We did do too much as a people, we've been through too much as believers, we've been through too much as men and women of color and this winter men of this United States of America to not worship him. Come on, praise him. You might stop singing it. You might fight for the people that have just decided to cry and give up. Quit and throw in that towel. So we've been
Hold on, hold on. We've been through too much. And what God is at work in this thing out, Lord, I will continue to follow you. To those of you that are at home, remain encouraged. Too much time has been spent. We pray for Brother Hollis and his family. I'm not quick to start running off of famous people because I see believers have such an intimacy with famous folk and have no concern for people they fellowship with. They just, I don't get that. I'm talking about, they talking about they just cousins. And they really impacted their life. Well, knock it off. But thank you. I thank you for every leader. They're still believing God in a special way and they're holding on to the responsibility of sharing with others. I'm sitting out in eating, Google it if you don't know what it means. To those that are members of this church between the ages of right now, I believe 21 and 40. 21 and 40. That I'm going to be setting up a Zoom call. I need to talk to you. Um, you know who you are, the Alexes of the world, the Jessicas, um, so on and so forth, Destinies. You know who you are. If you're attached to this ministry in any way, we have had any influence. Uh, it's coming forth. Tell somebody, tell somebody. Don't assume they heard. Don't assume they were watching. Tell them, tell them. If you have a person in that age group, call, send a message uh, to get us touch. We'll give you the information. Uh, people are on time out. People are on church break. But still asking God for help. The pandemic has not affected God's relationship. It has affected your fellowship with the building. It has not affected your relationship with God. Hallelujah. And then to the rest of you, Penuel, Christ first. This won't work if you don't find a way to play more of a part. Amen. That is absolutely not talking about attendance. Execute what God has made you comfortable. I'm negative tests all day long, but that don't mean I'm, I'm, I'm cavalier in my behavior. But we're too busy waiting on God. As if he's not doing something yet. He's already doing it. He's already keeping us. He's already helping us pilgrim through this barren land. He's already the God of peace. What are you waiting for? So what that means is that I'll be more forthcoming and, res and, and, and responsible of italicizing and making very plain what sacrifice looks like for the ministry. Amen. Amen. That might mean that when the church is closed, just your family come clean it. Y'all live together, y'all come clean together. Hello. I, can't, I ain't gonna come in the ground. You ain't gonna worry about all the people. I'm gonna open the door and I'm gonna throw the key in the ground. Y'all come clean the church though. So we clean it all the time by myself. Or since Flynn. Amen. You ain't got to like it. You ain't got to like it because I ain't lying. But there's a sacrifice that's needed. Thank you, Brother Jason. To him and, 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 and give flowers while y'all been to the anniversary or whatever. You know when the flowers come out the side and start saying, give me my flowers while I can smell them. To, 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 to Sister Sheila and Brother Jason. Your, your, your sacrifice and help in a time of need, I won't, I won't even try to thank you because it will pale in comparison to God's reward. Amen. And you know what I mean for the things you and your mother have done. As we prepare to leave this place, but never God's presence, if you are at home and you tuned in because your coworker, your auntie got on your nerves and said, you need to listen to my nephew or your homeboy said, my church is pretty cool. Church is never too good to where we don't ask that question. I definitely be ready to respond to what must I do to be saved. If you have not accepted Christ, don't be ashamed. The right hand of fellowship has to be virtual and we'll come find you. But post it. Tell somebody, connect with me. I, I want to accept Christ. That's important to us. We ain't just trying to have some Holy Ghost turn up. We want to be responsible. For the, for the call of God. Hopefully, you, uh, we, we, we encourage you, but it's about getting you on the other side. And it's not about joining this church. For you might accept Christ here, but go, I need to go back to my grandma. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then lastly, but not least, 
And lastly, but not an intermission or separation for worship, but a continuance in worship in our giving. Will you be responsible for what God has done with you and through you? Do you see so as you tithe as you first would offer as you? You that are given just what you have. I don't want to put everything under a banner, but be responsible to God in your giving today. Not for the sustainability of a ministry, but one for the rebuke of the devourer and in a right, continued relationship with God. This church has been a church for over decades that has a tangible proof that we are not building an endowment. We work outside these four walls. Hallelujah. And because I don't have to execute that testimony, it definitely should be one of those of you that are attached to it. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me if you, if you, if you, if you choose to? I'm asking you to take that choice. That was, that was more habit. That was habit. Be encouraged today. The battle is not yours, but God's. That means, since the battle will persist, persist, the Lord is leading us through. That meant that the fight on behalf of God, that means for some of you, your peace is your fight. Amen? You put your fist down. That means you trusting him to be there is your fight. For some of you, him being a provider, that's been your fight. Am I making sense? The names are not the names of God. So I just want you to be encouraged. As they just whispered these songs, we want to thank uh, Did you come down today or are you been down this week? Thank Pastor Tracy uh, all the way, all the way, all the way, down to 15. Down to 15, that ain't for all Vegas. That's what uh, Carrie tell people, I'm going out of town. You're going to Vegas? You ain't going out of town, you're going down the street. But I guess because it's a state line, that ain't going to get trapped. She, she down the street, she's down the street, she's down the street. She down the street. We just want to thank her for being here. Hallelujah. Say something, y'all. Hey, I done ran way over, so y'all better smile. Y'all make me feel like I kept on too long. The DJ, the DJ has never told nobody at the club, I apologize for keeping you. Oh, y'all act like y'all never in the club. Okay, this is the same crowd. Okay, give me two of y'all that used to go to the club, other than mine. All right, okay. So, because all y'all act like, Yes, the club. The DJ, I never heard DJ. I'm gonna tell y'all I'm sorry to keep y'all out all night, but the music, no, he don't do that. So I'm gonna stop doing it. So I'm gonna stop apologizing to keep y'all in the presence of God. So get over it. You can just turn it off or you can leave. But I'm glad that God is in the room. Come on, celebrate that. Come on, praise team. Just give him a little song as they prepare to give. Sister Fleming will be in the rear to receive your offering. However, this is a moment in the presence of God that we just celebrate. We, we dismiss the moment. We don't dismiss his presence. If you just want to sow with God, do that. Um, just for those that are online, I just don't want them to see us haphazardly making it out of the building because we don't execute that old school social hanging out. Amen? Is that all right? Come on, celebrate God one more time. Praise be.